In this video, we're going to talk about what's called the effective annual yield. Our objective, define and compute effective annual yield. Well, first off, what is it? <laughs> okay, the effective annual yield, also called the effective annual rate, is the rate after all the compounding has been done for the year. Okay, so what you see normally advertised at banks or institutions that uh, borrow money, they have a nominal rate, that's the advertised rate, and then they may or may not have this posted, they may or may not have the effective annual rate posted, and that's the rate that actually gets paid after, after all the compounding has taken place. Okay, so they say, we, uh, our rate is 7%, we compound monthly. Okay, well, after a year, what's the actual rate that you paid? Okay, what is the actual rate that you, were, you paid me? It is used to compare investments with different rates and different compounding periods. In other words, this bank compounds quarterly, this other bank compounds monthly, their rates are slightly different, which is better, okay? Because they're compounding differently, they may have slightly different rates, which is better, okay? As usual, we're gonna just make use of the formula. And here is the formula for the effective annual yield. The effective annual yield or the rate, which will come out as a decimal, is a fairly simple formula. It's the sum of one plus the rate as a decimal, divided by the number of times compounded per year, that sum raised to the number of times compounded per year, and then subtract one from this whole calculation here. Okay, let's see an example. Again, it's fairly straightforward. Which is better? An investment that pays 5% compounded monthly, or one that pays five and a quarter percent compounded quarterly? Okay, so the first investment here is compounding more often, but it's a little lower rate. The second investment is compounding a little less often, only four times per year, but it's a slightly higher rate. So which one's better? Well, let's see. If we calculate their yield, we can compare them. So the first one is going to be 5%, and we're compounding monthly. And the second one is 5.25 or five and a quarter percent. And we're only compounding quarterly. Whoops, Q A R T in this situation. Okay, well, let's use our formula. The yield equals parenthesis one plus the rate as a decimal divided by the number of times compounded per year raised to the number of times compounded per year minus one, okay? One plus the rate is 5% as a decimal 0 0.05. We are compounding monthly, that's 12 times per year. The 12 also goes up here, and then from this calculation, we'll subtract one. Out comes a decimal, in this case, it was approximately 0 0.0512. Remember, the yield comes out as a decimal to make it a percent, We'll, we'll multiply it by 100. This is a 5.12% effective annual yield. So they advertise the nominal rate as 5%, but when all was said and done after the year, because they compounded monthly, you actually got paid a 5.12% interest rate. Okay, not bad, all right. Let's, talk, see, let's see how this compares to a higher rate that's compounded less frequently. Back to our formula. One plus R over N to the N minus one. Let's substitute. One plus the rate. Well, the rate is 5.25% as a decimal. 0, 0.525. Okay, this one is compounded quarterly, which we know is four times a year. So there's a four goes here, and the four goes here, and then I subtract one off of that calculation, and this one comes out to be a 
approximately 0.535 as a percent, 5.35 percent. So again, the nominal rate, the advertised rate for this second investment was five and a quarter. But when we paid out all the, we compounded quarterly and we added it all up, we actually came out with a 5.35% rate as its effective annual yield. And our question was, which is better? Well, obviously, paying you a rate to 5.3% is better than paying you a rate to 5.12%. So this is the better choice. So there you have it. A little bit about effective annual yield.